Okay, so I recorded the other episode yesterday, and now I'm recording the, this episode. Uh, I haven't even started editing the last episode, because I, I need to know what happens, and I sure you do as well. <laughs> hey guys, it's your blah 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Winds of Change, uh, episode 12, I believe. Uh, but, but forget about that now. What the fuck? Last episode, Damek died. What? And uh, the, the 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 bad guys attacked, and all all the all that is bad happened. So uh, so yeah, there's no time to talk about this. We need to find out what happened next. Let's go. Uh, also, right, uh, what happened? What, what, how did it end for us? Oh yeah, we fought about the sword with Sovi, and we had the vision, both of us, or everything went white, I think. And we, I think that Sovi might have had a vision. And then, like, the, the cave caved in or something, and then we faded, and now I guess we're waking up again. My vision slowly fades back in, much to my surprise. I've been on the verge of death for what seemed like an eternity. I'm strong. My will and the power inside me refuses to give in. I am determined. Pain radiates from the wound on my chest, but I'm almost getting used to it. Sophie's attempt to make it more fatal had clearly failed. Or did they? Hmm. I remember the thought I had in my mind the moment I faded away. I wanted to be saved. I wanted to make this through alive. Could the blade have that much power? Could it have saved me? I backed myself up against the wall and lay against it. Then I scanned the room. Wait, what's that? A hulking shadow is on the other side of the room, whispering to itself. But Damek's body is still on the floor. Who could that be? Well, it could be Gris because he just disappeared, right? <laughs> I look at the exit to the room. It's caved in. Impossible. There was no one else in the room with us. Their ears perk up. They must have heard my movements. Quickly turning to face me, they take heavy, slow steps. Stumbling from side to side, it's almost like they can't balance. I can't see their face. My vision is too blurry. But when they make it to my location, they kneel down. While normally I would be frightened, I seem to feel at ease. <laughs> it's that dude! It's the dude! The, 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 the one I couldn't date. Cool. So I, I guess he's an ally. <laughs> they reach forward and places a hand on my chest. I hadn't realized it, but in my confusion, the pain had stopped. Or was it even there to begin with? Maybe I just felt it in my head. Oh, and he also has uh, different color eyes. Hetero... Heterochromia. Uh, my, old, my old persona used to have that. <laughs> they let go and shake their head dismissively. A flicker of light from the dying idol illuminates their face. When I see them, I ask who they are, but get no straight answer. Gaze near the abyss, after a lifelong journey, and plead. Beg for the answer to your most undying question, and tell me... What would frighten you most? Being left in silence, or hearing an answer? What? I don't understand, and I shake my head. But something tells me that they look familiar to me. I'm too delirious to think straight, so this thought goes nowhere. The pursuit of an answer is more defining than the answer itself. For no truth can compare to the truth we've conjured in our head. Hearing an answer may rob us of purpose. We prefer silence. But sometimes, the silence can be maddening. We can convince ourselves that purpose is not important. Self-destructive. Purpose breeds strength and victory. We desire victory. He stands up and holds out his hand. I grab it and he pulls me to my feet. This is the first time I truly see him. He's covered in scars from head to toe. Almost like if he endured torture or something far worse. Tattoos adorn his arm, much like those on Ulrich's body. Oh, maybe he's also from uh, Alestia, or whatever Ulrich's country was called. Who was this? We need no name. A name defines an individual. We are many, and therefore cannot be defined. This body is merely a tool. It bends to our will. What? Okay, so he was talking about himself, so is he like under control of the spirit or something? Is he the triumvirate? What? <laughs> we know how confused you are. It's always the same. Come with me. There's still much we need to do. Domic, right? That's the name of your leader? Yes. 
He turns around and looks at Dominic's body. You said that name in your sleep. You called out to him. But only we responded. He lives. We took care of that while you slept. Who? He's alive? I look over and watch his chest move up and down. He's breathing. I'm almost in disbelief at this. What happened? We will tell you both. There is much to discuss. With the exit cut off, we have sufficient time. A funny concept time. Perhaps another day. Perhaps. We will go to Damek, and the mystery man takes slow steps again. His limbs appear to be stiff, as if they've been unused for a long time. I kneel down and shake Damek softly, placing my hand on his shoulder. He should have been awake by now. His wounds were grievous. He was saved. We were limited, but we did what we could. Rise. He says this in a demanding tone, and Dominic starts to move. His eyes slowly open, and he looks at both of us as he comes to. Sa Salus? Am I dead? What's going on? Wait, is he Salus? What? I laugh softly and tell him that he's not dead. But he seems to have me confused with Salus. Salus! Wait. His eyes are fixated on this mysterious man as he says the name. I take a few steps back, confused, and scared at the same time. Could he possibly... No, there's no way. That This makes no sense. How... are you alive? How am I alive? Are you telling me that this dude is Milo's dad? I mean, I can't say that they are, have a much resemblance, but okay, okay, sure. This isn't right. Salus was dead. Our old elder, the Rebellion's founder. Salus, the name of this vessel. He no longer lives. Do not use this name. As we said before, no name is required. We simply exist. What? Damek and I look at one another, utterly confused. Please explain, I don't understand. The man points to the center of the room. You will have a seat. You may be satisfied. Nor, perhaps not. We have some answers, but not all of them. I reach down and help Damek up. He grunts. There are no wounds on his adomnum. There's nothing. This would require some serious explanation, and fast. I take Damet over to the center of the room, and we sit down. The other man, however, walks over to the exit and inspects it. Trapped, as always. Do you trust your comrades? We think they are your only hope. If they survived... Yes. He walks over to our location and sits down. I guess all we could do was wait to get rescued. The Rebel HQ was full of digging tools after all. You will ask, and we may answer. He sits in silence and waits for us to make Ness move. Who are you? The idol is no more. Its energy was released. It may still glow, but it will soon go dim. Lifeless. Energy must be stored somewhere. Less wasteful. Hmm. Much of it went into that sword you carry. Some of it was used to heal your wounds. The rest? Well... We found a vessel to use. So you are the spirits, or like the spiritual energy or whatever. A vessel? This body expired long ago. It offered no resistance and no identity. We thought it would be fitting. We desired a voice. Who is we? <laughs> we are what you call the spirit realm. Until now, our power was stored only in objects. That and vessels which had their own voice, like you. Huh. He looks at me. Oh, so you mean, you mean seers? So, let me get this straight. The power released from the idol healed us, and it took over Salas's body so it could talk. <laughs> you don't sound that convinced, Damek. <laughs> Correct. So, I'm talking to the spirit realm right now. A portion. The rest resides in... His body, and the sword. However, the spirit realm is just a term you created to define us. We are more than that, and we finally have a voice in your world. Ooh. Dama gulps, getting a little frightened. Are you peaceful? That is a relative term. <laughs> that's, that's true, that depends on the person who's asking, I guess. 
Are you going to hurt us? No. What is your purpose? An impossible question. Do you know your purpose? No, I guess not. <laughs> we only wish to aid you. Please do not question. It would please us greatly to see the triumvirate fall. We are their victims, just as much as you are, Domic. Ooh. Victims? You do not know the truth of what we are. It is understandable, because we could never tell. Using this voice, we wish to make our suffering known. So are the Spilladrum filled with the people that have died? And using this body, we wish to enact our vengeance. If this is acceptable, we will join you after rescue. If rescue comes, that is. Until then, we talk. <laughs> Damak nods. He takes this very well, actually. After all, he's talking to the corpse of his former leader, but the strategist needed to adapt to change and overcome it. Or maybe he's just numb from the trauma of these events. Of course, but you need to explain! What is the truth of the spirit realm? Were we so wrong that you needed a voice? We do not blame you for your interpretation. Given your situation, it made perfect sense. But yes, you were wrong. Very wrong. Huh? What were we wrong about? Me and Damak look at each other once more. Me and Damak look at each other once more. I'd never believe this if we didn't just cheat death. But given the circumstances, we can't deny the truth. This was a living embodiment of the spirit realm. Much like the idols, but able to walk and talk as well. Then there was no more secrets. He would tell us everything about the spirit realm. The undying questioning of our history finally answered. What was the purpose and why did they influence us? The answers would change everything. Forever. Oh, fade to black. Fade, fade to black. <laughs> okay, back to the war table where we were supposed to be going in the beginning of the last episode. Eventually ending up in the war room, everyone looks around frantically. It wasn't much longer until they noticed the back corner of the room was caved in. Rather than digest the current events, they search for Damak and the Seer. They must be down with the idol. Can we even get down there? No. Go back to the crew quarters, Fortim. <laughs> you too, Valessa. Bring us some equipment. We should be able to reach them if we dig. Of course. What should we look for? Pickaxes, shovels, stuff like that. Anything to help us get through that rubble. Right! They both run off, in search of supplies. It was clear that the tunnels caved in, but how bad was it? They cling to the hope that everybody survived. Hey, are you sure you don't want to join them? Shouldn't they have some sort of protection? No, everything will be fine. Not under forces are on guard. Nobody else will be coming or going. Then what about Sovi? Do you think he's down there? No, he's probably long gone. But I didn't see him run off anywhere. We were all in the tunnels, weren't we? That's the point, Pro. You don't see a man like him. Mm -hmm. He comes and goes as he pleases. What a douche. Oh, okay. He crosses his arms, both confused and concerned. What should we do while we wait? Are you sure you don't want me to help them? I'm certain. We need to talk, Pro. Ooh. About what? Let's say Domek did fall in combat. What would we do then? What's our next step? Right. They should have a plan B. <laughs> <sighs> I don't want to think about that. Losing Salas was more than enough. I I'm sure he's alive. We'll find him. The, I mean, the most logical thing to do is just making the Elder the leader. So yeah, for him, you're up. <laughs> you're the leader of the rebellion. Woo! But what if he's not? We need to think, Pro. Things would be in our hands. Our hands? Yes. We'd be the new leaders. How would we come oh. back from this? Uh, I don't know if we can. That's why I sent those two away. I don't think they'd be ready to hear this. There's a very real chance that the Seer is dead. No! If that's the case, then there's nothing we can do. We'd never be able to win this war conventionally. That blade and their power was all we had, Pro. I don't know, Ulrich, but I feel like they're alive. They wouldn't give in so easily. I guess we'll find out. Then we need to trust in the spirits, right? They showed Domic a vision of our victory. 
but they also showed Valinorth's destruction. We know that was false. They attacked our HQ instead. Hmm. <laughs> Are you saying the spirits were lying? I don't know, Pro. It's too complicated for me to say. But something tells me that we can't trust the spirits anymore. If they come out from that tunnel, it'll be as changed men. And Ulrich had no idea how true that statement was. <laughs> the mysterious man takes a deep breath before starting to talk. Damek and I sit forward in awe, almost in disbelief at the situation. The spirit realm was using a vessel to speak directly to us. I'm not sure if we should be honored or terrified. The rulers of this world, the triumvirate, already you take up arms against them. This is good. We were unable to do so in our current state. We were trapped. Was that so? Traps? It all happened in the blink of an eye. Our glorious monarchy, destroyed in an instant. They showed no mercy. They showed nothing. Something happened. Something beyond words. We were simply living life, and then we were not. They forced us to watch them defile our world. So, do they mean that they were like, like a type of life force here before the Triumvirate or something? I don't understand. Neither do we. But that is what happened. They stole our future and our bodies. We were prisoners, bound by celestial chains as they had their way with our world. Oh, so was the spirits um, like the Triumvirate, but then the Triumvirate came and took over or something? Hmm. So they didn't create Celestia? No, but they created you, huh? the new residents of Celestia, built in their image of perfection to counter our corrupt nature. They stole our world and our future, handing it off to you. To counter our corrupt nature. Hmm. So making the world more corrupt is pleasing these people, but making it more pure is pleasing the triumvirate? Hmm. This is incredible! We do not share the same opinion. <laughs> no, no, I meant the story! I can't believe I'm hearing this right now. We always knew there was more to this world. This is why we needed a voice. We've suffered for eternities, unable to speak, forced to watch, and cry for help upon deaf ears. I have a few questions. Of course. So, the spirit realm is more like a prison, and it held you and your people captive? Huh. Then what are these visions and idols all about? Almost all of our culture has been built around them, especially Valinorth, which is where the seer comes from. Rumor has it that the Triumvirate wanted to destroy the idols. Over time, we were forced to adapt. We changed. The idols are a manifestation of our desire to reach out. They gave us the ability, however minimal, to speak with you. Oh. The visions, you mean? Yes, but our power was limited, and we were censored. This is why we could never tell you the truth through visions. Whenever we did, the Triumvirate made you see something else. Huh. That's what they did this time then? We saw Valinorth getting attacked and strategized about that. But it seems like their plan was always to attack us down here. Indeed. Which is why we chose not to create another idol. Instead, we chose to influence the members of their honor guard. The barracks. The living quarters. The weapons. We did it all. For you. So it was for the rebellion, but the Triumvirate didn't do it. It was these guys. Oh my god. Half right. <laughs> we did it so you would survive this trap and help us seek vengeance. It seems the cost was dire, but we succeeded. We shall succeed again. We wish to aid your assault in Balteus and take back our homeland. So you come from Balteus? We lived all over Alestia, but Balteus was our capital. The castle there housed the monarch, our king or queen. We may have been corrupt, but we lived in peace. We were happy. What do you mean by corrupt? We are not certain. Perhaps there is inherent evil in all of us, 
the triumvirate deemed that a flaw and rewrote the world when your kind was first made. You were mindless slaves, forced to carry out the triumvirate's bidding. No free will. That is a gift we gave to you through the idols we created. Slowly, our corruption merged with the purity of your kind. Interesting. That was the first step. After that, we created seers, beings capable of hearing our plight and leading insurrections. To this day, all have failed. We were not strong enough. Oh no, but I am the first one to be strong enough. <laughs> Wait, I know where this is going. The man stands up, motioning his arm to suggest that we do the same. Damek and I both do as instructed, dusting ourselves off by looking up at him. Yes. That is why we gave the seer all of our power. Enough to wield that blade against your creators and our captors. The timing seemed correct. It is a gamble, but with favorable odds. Mm. However, there is another matter at hand. There is no more spirit realm. The idols are all gone, and the power resides within us and that blade. The power within you, Seer, is immense. You carry on our legacy. Ooh. So now, I will call you what you are. He immediately kneels down and looks at the floor. If I wasn't mistaken, it looks like he's wearing fealty. Rightful heir to the throne of the monarchy, my king. What? I will serve you in this fight <laughs> to take back <laughs> our world. And together, we will all be free from their grip. What the fuck? <laughs> the king? Okay. Cool. <laughs> king? <laughs> king? We exchanged glances, confused and shocked. The power inside of me made me heir to the throne? Knowing the truth of the spirit was enough. But this? This is too much. I take a few steps back, overwhelmed. How could I possibly be expected to process this? Maybe we should slow down here. We must not. To slow down would be giving them time. They've had enough. We've watched for far too long. The weight of our kind is upon you. Do not let us down. Before I can even react, I hear a sound from the other side of the room. The rubble that blocked the exit started to crumble and fall to the ground. I can hear the harsh impact of a pickaxe. They found us! The man remains knelt to the ground. I tell him to rise. He obeys without questioning, clearly respecting my authority. He considers me king. I have no idea what to say. As you command. All of us turn to look at the exit. It isn't much longer until light pierces through. The final bit of rumble is out of the way and Ulrich emerges. Domek, we were so worried that you- He immediately stops in his tracks, staring at us. It's clear that he's shocked at the sight of sails. Fortim, Valesa and Pro enter shortly after. What? Ulrich steps forward, immediately cautious. He looks ready to grab his blade at a moment's notice. I can understand how his confusion and shock manifest this way. At ease, Ulrich. I'll try my best to explain. Damek steps forward too, as if to guard both of us. Everybody, let's go back to the atrium. There's much to discuss and I'll tell you all the truth. He looks over at the mysterious man and simply gulps. Things just got a lot more complicated. For all of us. Ooh. And with that, I'm, I'm gonna pull down the, 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 the thing for the, the windows. Be right back. The blinds. They call them blinds. <laughs> we all enter the atrium, and I notice that Ulrich is still visibly shocked and angry. Pro seems the same. However, he's less intense. They seem to recognize sailors. Even when less than four times seems anxious. Our old and very dear elder alive? Bodies scatter the floor, as well as pieces of white and gold armor. Rebels cry, cradling the bodies of their fallen comrades in their arms. There weren't many people left standing. This was a catastrophic attack. Oh no, it's the morale down to zero percent, no! Damek goes over to a nearby staircase and waves over at me and Salus. 
We follow after him and slowly ascend the stairs. This was the time to tell everybody. When we get to the top, he rests his hand on the railing, taking a deep breath. I guess this is it. Where do I even start? He shakes his head before clearing his throat. He had a lot of ground to cover. The noise echoes through the atrium and the surviving rebels turn to look. Seeing Darmak at the top of stairs, they gather to listen to the leader. They say that mercy is the mark of a great man, but there are no great men in war. We've seen that here today. War is only a game to see how much you can lose before giving up. But trust me, we will never give up. Join me, brothers and sisters. Grab a blade from the floor, even if it belonged to their honor guard. Take it. I'd prefer that. The Triumvirate may think they've crippled our resolve, but no. Each swing of that blade will carry the weight of our fallen comrades behind it. We will use that weight to crush their army and make them pay for this attack. More rebels start to crowd around, looking up at Dalek. They have smiles on their faces as they nod along his words. This inspires him to continue his speech, his morale rising quickly. When the Triumvirate looks down on that blade in their final moments, I want them to know that they sealed their own fate. Mark my words, family, the Triumvirate shall fall. They will burn for what they've done here today. Yeah. And in the end, they will beg for the mercy they were too unkind to give to us. We will free this world from their grip and deliver it to the hands of the righteous. Our dynasty will be marked with blood, yes, but theirs was marked with far more. He looks over at Sailors and motions for him to step forward. Doing so, a lot of rebels look shocked, much like Ulrich and Pro. The spirit realm has given us one final blessing. The truth, standing here before you is not Salis. He has become a vessel. This is the spirit realm embodied. Powered by our underground idol, driven by the howls of countless spirits, he seeks vengeance. But he has also brought with him the answers to our every question. No longer shall we live in the dark. We know the true nature of things. Everybody mumbles among themselves, clearly confused. I glance over at Ulrich and Pro, and they seem a bit more calm. As odd as this truth was, they seem to trust Darmok no matter what. We are not the only victims of the Triumvirate's wrath. The spirit realm is not what we believed, not at all. What we cherished and worshipped was a prison. A prison to house the previous residents of Alestia. Residents that were deemed too corrupt by the Triumvirate. As they were pushed aside, we were created to serve. The Triumvirate did not create our world, but they did create us in the image of perfection. We were pure, and existed only to follow their every order. Oh. But over time, the previous residents reached out from their prison. Growing in strength, they created what we called the spirit idols. These were used to slowly give our people the gift of free will. Though pure, we lacked the abilities to be ourselves. This was the greatest gift we could ever ask for. They opened our eyes, allowing us to fight back. But so far, every insurrection has failed. This is what we will change, thanks to the seer. That's me. <laughs> he waves over at me and I take a few steps forward. The rebels stare at me with hope in their eyes. A perfect counter to the despair I saw earlier. You see, the spirit realm is no more. All of the energy in that realm has found a new home. Some of it is in this vessel, and some of it is in the blade. But the largest portion resides within the seer. That is why he is uniquely capable of wielding the blade. Alestia's previous residents, the ancient monarchy, are responsible. They saw a way to help us defeat the Triumvirate and took it. But you see, we no longer fight for ourselves. We fight for everybody. If we lose, both us and the monarchy perish. We cannot let this happen. We are the only people capable of carrying out this objective. There won't be another chance. No more seers, no more blades. We will show them that their vision of a pure world is flawed. Yeah. But in order to do so, I must step down as the general. What? You see, this army is no longer mine to lead. I'm sorry. This new truth changes both the world and our cause. What? Dominic motions to me to come closer, so I do. He smiles. I'm standing right beside him, resting my hands on the banister. 
I see such a wide array of emotions coming from the rebels' faces. As I mentioned, the seer was blessed with immense power. But what he truly has within is the souls of the monarchy, giving him the strength to use that blade. He is our champion. Yeah. But he is more than just our champion. He is our king, rightful heir to the throne of Alestia, our true ruler. By decree of the spirits, we are his to command. Okay. I guess all eyes are on me now. I glance over at Valessa and Fortem. They're in complete shock and awe at the revelation. But I am too. Without saying anything, I reach back for the blade and pull it out. I look at the rebels and hold the blade out in the air. The beam of light from the surface serves to illuminate this beauty. This elicits rigorous applause from the rebels as they cheer me on. Yay, troop morale has risen to 5%, wow! <laughs> I smile, looking down at my friends and comrades. In this moment, it seems that the hope we lost had finally returned. There was still a lot to take care of, but we knew that this wasn't over. If you'll excuse us, we need to make some new plans. But I'll have an itinerary posted in the barracks by morning. Until then, please do your best to clean up this atrium. And please, bring the bodies down to the spirit idol. It seems only fitting, and there's plenty of room. With that said, you're all dismissed. Thank you. Dominic turns his face to me and Sailors. He smiles, realizing his job is done. Well then, back to the war table. We need to talk about our next step. Without a bigger army, we won't win. And I think I know what to do. Come on, bring your friends too. I'll grab Ulrich and Pro. Let's do this. Uh, okay, let's go to the war table then. Something is different about Damek. He's not as happy and energetic as he was before, but he seems a lot more confident and resolute. When I get to the bottom of the stairs, Valessa and Fortem appear. I can tell they're overwhelmed, but they also seem happy for me. They seem to disregard the resurrection of Sailors and focus on me. I always knew you were special, but a king? And no more spirit realm. <sighs> What's going to happen? That is so cool, Seer! <laughs> or, I guess I should call you king now. Or maybe monarch? I don't know, it's just cool! Ah. <laughs> he laughs and shuffles in place awkwardly. They may not want to talk about it, but they know. Everything feels off right now. Things are so confusing. I hope that we can work all of this out. Let's go plan our next move with Domic. I wonder what he has in mind for us. I bet it's something amazing. He might not be the leader, but he's still a strategist. We need to make sure that we come back from this loss. Yeah. Valessa looks at all of the bodies on the atrium floor. It's also covered in blood, likely to stain for a long time. If Sailors could come back from the dead, then what about them? But he didn't come back from the dead. Sailors is still dead, it's just his body being puppeteered by this. But hello. Donk, donk, donk. Hello? Seer, you home? Yeah, we can't let their deaths be in vain. Like Domic said, they need to give us strength. The only thing we can do is hope that it's enough. We arrive back at the war table taking sighs of relief. Damek's speech was great, it helped the rebels to find hope again. But they need more than words to win the upcoming battle. So, we need to find a new army, but recruiting Mazaeans would take far too long. We need to take drastic measures and fast. This is where my initial plan comes into play. We can use that spiritual energy to create seers. They could see the outcome of every battle, every attack. Huh. That doesn't make any sense, Damek. Visions lie to the king, let us into a trap. The Triumvirate could just do that all over again. Oh, so you're just gonna refer to me as the king now? <laughs> and that, that's what, what I was thinking as well, that they can still influence what people see. But maybe Dominic would be like, yeah, but if there are like so many of them, they can't influence all of them, maybe. I notice he uses my new title. It still feels odd. I'm not sure that's how it works. Uh, beforehand, the visions came from their prison. That means the Triumvirate could tamper with the outflow. But now, all of that is in the hands of the king. There's nothing more getting in the way, see what I mean? No. The power of the spirit realm is now ours to wield, Ulrich. So you mean that I am going to give the visions? 
That still doesn't make any sense. The spirit realm isn't what we thought it was, Stomach. It was just a prison. How can that help us tell the future? Before Damak can respond, Sailor steps forward. That was our culture. We all had this ability. It is how the monarchy lived in peace and prosperity. There was no danger left unchecked. No chance. The world was being guided to the one true future. It is not unlike the concept of fate that some believe in, but it is tangible. We knew where we were going. Always. That is why the triumvirate was such a shock to us. An unknown variable in a future we completely mapped out. It was too late to adapt. We were already shackled. We slowly learned to lend our foresight to your world. However, we were only strong enough to help one individual. This is the concept you have learned to call the Seer, or Seeress. Domic's theory is sound. There is no longer any interference. The source of this power is now the king, rather than a prison. He can freely give this power to any individual he pleases. But who will give the visions? Can he give it to himself? We would not recommend this course of action. Every vision he induces would reduce his overall strength. It would whittle away at the monarchy, slowly killing us all. Oh, so I will give the visions? Furthermore, he does not know how to ration this power. He could end up expending almost all of it with a single vision. We would recommend giving a small portion of power to others. However, they would be rendered useless after this war. Using this power would be too much for their mind. Useless? They would be unable to think for themselves. Or at all. The king could only do this because he grew up with that power. Just like our culture. To receive it too late can wreak havoc on the mind. So they would be like brain dead afterwards? So they'd just sit around until they died? Unless you fed them. Oh wow. There must be another way. Just look in front of you. That energy could be used to bring back the forces we lost. We could create more vessels for the monarchy. More soldiers. Like the triumvirate did? Ulrich was right. There was more than one choice here. It wouldn't be right to condemn our people to zombie-like existence. If the mind had died out after the war, they had no victory to enjoy. We would not advise this action. We can barely maintain this form. The wounds that ended Salas are burning, as if freshly inflicted, and is only tolerable because of the immense power within us. Lesser beings would be feeling eternal pain, and death does not come easily to a vessel like this. Wounds endured during the war would add to this pain. We would not wish this punishment upon anybody. Life in eternal pain. A constant memory of their own death. They perished for your cause. Give them the rest they deserve. I don't know. An army of seers would be great for strategizing, but stealing their own future from them? That's wrong. On the other hand, bringing back the dead? I'm unsure. The pain would fuel their rage and make them stronger. They could eventually learn to manage it with medicine. At least they'd have a future. The seers certainly wouldn't. There must be something else we can do. Not if you wish to make use of this power. It is powerful when used, but limited in scope. I will help the king carry out whichever he decides. Right, I guess it's not my place to choose. Sorry, I, I must be still adjusting to this change. Suddenly all eyes are up on me. I have no idea what to say or do. Eternal pain? Or robbing futures? Creating seers would ruin their mind after the war. They would just sit in a chair where we fed them to remain alive. But an army of vessels? They'd feel nothing but excruciating pain. And not even death would come to free them from that pain. The body could get ravaged, but the power would still be inside. If only it was possible to cure them of all the pain after the war was over. Or for that matter, I wish it was possible to preserve the seers' minds. But neither options have a foreseeable cure. This is a choice evolving the war. We needed an immediate boost in forces, and it seems that no cost was too high. What should I do? Also, I already have to make a choice. Okay, um... Let me go back in the chat see here what they said. Lesser beings would be feeling eternal pain, and death does not come easy for to vessel like this. 
wounds endured during the war would ap would add up to this pain. So does that mean that after the war, would they still be alive and feeling the pain forever, like for all eternity? Oh my God, that's that's what I want to know. I can't I can't know it now, but when they say eternal pain, do they mean eternal pain as long as they are like? As long as I keep them alive, like with my power, or will they be like alive forever in some in some sense, and forever feel paid? Because then the, it's the other choice is the more humane. Let's see what Valessa thinks. I'm sorry. I don't know. I really can't help you this time. Oh, uh, for Tim. You're asking too much of me. Sorry. This isn't something I could possibly decide. Oh, oh my God! Make your final choice. Let's see. This choice will affect the future of Alestia. Create an army of seers or create an army of monarch vessels. You know what? Let's decide in the next episode. <laughs> Let me leave it here, guys. I, I will. I will need some thinking. And um, unfortunately, I think that when you see this episode. The next one has already been recorded, so uh, please let me know what you think. But unfortunately, I don't think that that, <laughs> that that will have any impact since the episode is probably already recorded. Oh, Jesus Christ. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and leave a comment about uh, uh, how much you love these videos. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't already, please subscribe, but you probably are subscribed by now, uh, since you're watching it. Winds of Change, episode 12. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys, and remember that you are loved and appreciated, and you should be proud of who you are, because I want to see you in the next episode. Well, the blinds did do so much.